while we're waiting, obviously, um, we're, this, this happens every year this time. We're obviously in hurricane season. And uh, the very first year I was here as a professor, uh, Katrina hit. And so this seems to always start off this class, class with some type of, um, of hurricane craziness. Um, uh, in this case, we're looking at Dorian, right? So Dorian wa um, was over here, over Grand Bahama, and these the northern islands of the Bahamas stalled out. And it's been um, increasingly we're finding stranger and stranger behavior, or, or I guess I would say more deviation from what we've come to experience over the last century in terms of um, storms, cyclonic storm behavior. We call these things hurricanes when they're either off of our western coast or off of the um, eastern coast of the US. From the southern hemisphere or near Asia, we call them a typhoon. It's the same exact thing. They just spin the opposite direction. But these are um, uh, phenomena that have been going on for millions of years, if not more. Um, but obviously, climate change is, is making them um, behave differently. And in a, the, the two most obvious ways that are happening here. One, we're seeing increasing, we appear to be seeing um, increasing frequency of severe storms. So a uh, tropical storm is the same exact thing as a, as a um, um, major hurricane. It's just a matter of how intense they are. So it's just a matter of the, are they spinning a little bit faster? Is the wind blowing you know, more quickly? But um, atmospherically, climatologically, it's the same thing. It's a spinning vortex of hot air. And it's, it's in, this, these case, in this case are the storms that hit the eastern seaboard of the US. We don't fully understand exactly what the nucleating event of these, of these issues are, but they seem to mostly start with some type of dust storm blowing off of um, western Africa. And they cause some disturbance and, and things go on and, and they manifest in a series of um, potentially intense storms. So right now there's four tropical depressions that are going on or, or, or greater. So there's one over here um, down in, in Mexico at the moment that's only a tropical storm. Again, same thing, just not quite as, as fast. And then obviously Dorian. So the issue with Dorian, as we've been seeing in recent years, um, the, the typical boom, fly in there, boom, bang, and have an impact and go on uh, story is changing a bit. And we're seeing more frequently stalling of these storms. So when it was hitting the Bahamas, you could walk faster than the storm was moving. So instead of blasting through in an hour or two hours or three hours or 12 hours or whatever, it's staying for a day to three days. And so in the case of when it was hitting the, the main body of the Bahamas, it was a category five, which is our largest category storm. Um, on the order of 185 mile an hour winds and things of that nature. Um, also from a coastal management perspective, uh, you know, so our, the National Hurricane Center is in Florida, and it's built in this bunker thing, right? This big kind of like, you know, sci-fi building with concrete walls and blast walls and all this kind of stuff to, to take these giant storms. But much of the controversy, much of the challenge that we face in terms of management is that's not what most people experience. Most people are living in, in um, not fantastically built structures, in vulnerable areas, low-lying, et cetera. The other thing that's sometimes hard for us to understand is we're used to the California coast, where mostly our California coast is up down, right? Very steep, steep sided. We're a very geologically young coast. Uh, in, in, in the Gulf Coast, the East Coast, et cetera, those of you that have come with us to New Orleans or maybe might come with us to New Orleans in a future year, in one of our spring classes, um, you'll see you take, a ro you take a rock here and you throw it offshore where the, where the scuba vessel, where the conception just went down, it was 20 yards offshore, sank, it was in 65 feet of water, right? So a stone, you could take and throw that stone, if you're on the beach, let's say, you know, as hard as you can, and plunk, and it might sink down to 60, 70, 80 feet. Here, if we're in Florida or Louisiana or the Carolinas, we take that same stone and we throw it really, really hard, it's going to go plunk and land in like who knows, three feet of water, right? So it's a much more shallow thing. So when we hear about these storm surges, which is basically, don't do this, I don't want you to die, but if you're in the bathtub and you had a hairdryer and you're blowing it along the, along the you know, horizontally along the 
plane of the surface of the bathtub, you would, or if you did it with your mouth, right, you'd kind of, the water piles up, right, little lumps up for a second. That same phenomenon is happening right now in front of, in, in especially this area right around here. And it's, the storm is moving this away and it's moving forward and it's shoving all this water in front of it. So that's what we call um, storm surge. It's not a surge like you think of like a ooh, water flowing in a bay and out of a bay. It's the water goes high and stays for 12 hours that high. Or in the case of what's going on here, because these storms are moving so slowly, it's going to go that high and maybe stay for a day. So if you and I are living here on campus and we have a, let's call it 10 foot storm surge, right? We would be generally speaking, okay. Cause we're about 15 feet or so, depending on where we are on campus above um, mean sea level. If you are one foot above sea level as, or two or three feet as a lot of these houses are, um, you're kind of screwed, right? No matter what you've done with sandbags or, or wooden boards or whatever. And so this, the whole Eastern seaboard and Gulf Coast is a much flatter, flatter place. So when we talk about the coastal management challenges, we also need to make sure we understand the, the lay of the land. So the most vulnerable places, as much as we're gonna be screwed here in California, we at least have some up downness going on, right? Bangladesh, Southeast Asia, places like that, places like the Bahamas, places like Jamaica, much flatter overall, right? One, two, m many, um, much lower access to resources. So once that, that storm wall or whatever comes in and we go to fix it, who's gonna come in? So right now, the airport on Grand Bahama Island, so Freeport is the second largest city in that country, the airport, the international airport is six feet underwater as we speak. And so they're like, and this is about 80 miles, um, about 80 miles east of the, the coast of Florida. You know, so the Coast Guard are flying in helicopters at, to do inspections, but how do you even get the search and rescue folks in if you can't, if there's no, you know, dry place to put your airplane or your, or your folks? So, and this is just, you know, one small story. We're only talking about several, you know, 50,000, a few hundred thousand people, as horrible as that is for the Bahamas. When we talk about Bangladesh or some of those areas, we're talking millions of folks. And so sometimes in ESRM in general, but, but in particular with this coastal management stuff, sometimes people talk about, oh, the coast is like where the wealthy people live and all this and that. Um, we are interested in the coast broadly writ across the world, right? And of course there are w pockets of, of wealth in the coast, but as Sean has been describing, and you guys are starting to read about and all that kind of stuff, it really is a complex picture and it's where humanity lives. And so all of our challenges are laid bare. So when we have something like this Dorian going up and down the coast, it just you know, crystallizes the challenges that we face and, and makes things um, much more apparent. But these things are going on with or without a storm. So that's, that's Dorian right now. And with that, I will take a pause and Emily's gonna come give you guys a safety drill and then I'll pick up with, uh, with uh, talking about our surveys in a second.